I've been working on getting moving platforms going like these ones here. And uh, uh, it's taken a, a, a bit of effort, but we've got to the point where, uh, yep, they work. And I'm happy with that. I'm going to share uh, what I found about how they work. So um, looking in the Python Arcade um, uh, reference for documentation for the sprite object, the sprite object here, the sprite object has got a few things that are relevant to this, boundary left, boundary right, boundary top, boundary bottom, um, as well as the usual things that we use to center x, center y, change x, change y. So it turns out that these are used for moving sprites and they are used by the uh, the physics engine. So if you've set something up with a change X, so it's moving in the X direction, and you set it to a boundary left and a boundary right, and you apply the physics engine to it, then it automatically will move in a cyclic way between boundary left, boundary right with that speed. So let's look at how I've done that. Uh, starting in tiled, you can see I've got a, a layer here called horizontal moving platforms. It's got those two platforms on it. I import it, horizontal moving platforms, and um, I get it boundary left from the X position of the platform that I've imported. I get I set the boundary right out here. I've set it arbitrarily to 200 pixels off to the right. And arbitrarily, I've set the platform dot change x to five, and you can see what that looks like right here. It's going to be two hundred pixels width. Um, where is it? There we are. That's two hundred pixels going across, and that's a speed of five. Um, and then I append the individual platforms that have been um, I'm going through every platform in that list that I created from the horizontal moving platforms, appending it to the wall list, which is what I'm using in the physics engine. And the physics engine automatically is, is moving those things for me. So that works uh, pretty well on the whole. Uh, the problem I have that I don't like very much is they all move exactly the same so they start on the left hand side and they move at the same speed and um, they go the same distance and it, when you're making the game quite often it's nice to have jumping puzzles where you've got moving things moving at different speeds different rates um, it, it makes the, the the timing of the jumping quite interesting and fun so i was looking at how we go about that so back into tiled um, what I found was we could, this is a tile layer, and for the first time we're going to make something not a tile layer, we're going to make an object layer, which I'm going to call horizontal moving platforms, kind of wordy, but whatever, Hide it, um, and I'm going to call it two, whatever. So this is an object layer, and objects are very slightly different from sprites in that they can have custom properties as well. So I'm going to add something to this layer. Uh, let's pick something different so it doesn't look like what we're doing already. So I'm going to um, I select this. This is the icon for drawing something. I'm going to draw one of them. It doesn't seem to snap to the grid. I don't know if that's a setting you can change. I haven't put up too deeply. So I'm going to click this here. So this is the, uh, the sprite or object now, I guess, that I've just added to this layer. And I can add a new property to it. So for example, I can add a property of change X. Now the property has to be one of these ones that is um, in, th this is part of the sprite. So you, we can add boundary left, boundary right, boundary top, boundary bottom, whatever. Uh, I, I find that just adding this change X achieves what I want to achieve. It'd be kind of nice to add other things. I don't think that's supported in Python Arcade from what I can see, we'll see. So I'm gonna say my change X uh, for this one is three. Done, so I've got one thing there now, and I'm going to duplicate that. So if I click this button, which is the select object, and I right click on it and I duplicate object, and then I can, it duplicated it right on top and I'm going to put it right next to it 
and duplicate it again. Uh, we can actually click and then control click, control click. Can we? Control click, yep. So I've multi selected and can I control C even? I haven't even tried that. Control V. Oh, yeah, that worked. Okay, so all of these things here now have the same property of change X is three. So the bonus is that when I now import here, horizontal moving platforms, if I'm importing from that layer, which is not a sprite layer, it's now an object, a tile layer, sorry, it's now an object layer, it will automatically import that value. So I don't need to specify it here. Uh, I'm still going to go with the boundary left and boundary right. I could specify those as well. I don't think it will work very well because they they will, I can't easily describe it, but um, they won't work together to in, in the actual window. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll go with this for the moment. So uh, probably because of this code here, of course, because this is taking each of the um, sprites or objects that I add and using the current point that it's add as its leftmost boundary and then going 200 pixels to the right. Um, and if I specified their boundary left on each one, I would have to be really careful about how I specified that to make them it look like a platform. But right, you'll see. So uh, actually, I don't think I need to do anything apart from save that and run it, and we'll see what happens. Wait patiently for a moment. I'm ready. Yeah, here we go. And uh, did I not append them or something? Did I not say I didn't save this? I can't believe that I didn't save it. Control S. Try again. Sorry about that. You're wasting your time a little bit. But give it a moment, and magically we have that moving at a speed of three. So now I can go back into tiled, and I can say, right, let's. Um, Take all of these. Can I click and shift click? Will that work? No, I don't think so. I don't think I selected all of them. So if I actually, I'm not going to do it that way. What I'm going to do is select this one, and I'm going to right click and duplicate it and put it up here. And I'm going to change its change X to ten. Let's make it super fast, shall we? And then I will right click and duplicate that one. And uh, control click and uh, control C, control V, that worked. So I'm going to put that one up there, so we'll have two different ones, both with speed 10, control S, and back into here, and run that. So I'm kind of happy with that this is, a, this is a compromise. I've tried a few different ways, and um, this feels like the best bang for buck in terms of how much effort you have to put in to get it to um, do something that's going to be interesting in terms of gameplay. Um, there's better ways to do it, possibly, uh, that might, like, you, you want to specify, ideally, everything to do with the layout and how things behave in tiled. You know, that would be the most efficient way to do things. It, my suppression concerns that tiled is all about how the level behaves and then the code is about how the things behave within the level um, but this is this works for me I'm, I'm okay with this um, and if you understand this you can perhaps move on and develop your own stuff later